For this topic, we'll be talking about photosynthesis and respiration. First up, photosynthesis. If we were to break down the word photosynthesis, what you would notice we have the word photo. Photo refers to light. The second part that we have is synthesis. Synthesis refers to me. So photosynthesis is referring to an organism's ability to make their own food using light energy. Here's a fancy definition for it, instead of just saying to make their own food. It says uses inorganic molecules to make organic molecules. Inorganic molecules. So, here we have inorganic. Inorganic can include things like, remember, carbon dioxide, water, and also it uses light. And then it says to make organic compounds. Hmm, there's that word again, organic, that we need to know. Organic is referring to a molecule that has both carbon and hydrogen inside of it. So the organic molecule that we're going to focus on is going to be glucose. Do you remember the formula for glucose? The formula for glucose is C6H12O6. Notice it has both the carbon and the hydrogen required in order to make it organic. Let's look at the formula. If I was to take the region, first thing I would do if I saw that it was a photosynthesis question, I would write down the formula. I think that's really important because the wording is very tricky, the concepts not so much. Here we have the formula. Carbon dioxide, water, and light give you uh, glucose and oxygen. First up, if we look here at the carbon dioxide and water, those are going to be referred to as inorganic compounds. Notice they don't have a carbon and a hydrogen together in the formula. One thing that's missing from this formula that you should probably get in the habit of adding is going to be enzymes. Remember, the function of enzymes is to speed up a chemical process. If there were no enzymes here, photosynthesis would take way too long and no organism would be able to survive. Next thing we have is C6H12O6. Remember, that's just glucose. Glucose, since it has the carbon and the hydrogen in it, is going to be an example of an organic compound. And then we have oxygen. That's the formula. Other things that you hopefully remember about a formula are products and reactants. They like using those terms a lot. The reactants are going to be the ones that you start off with. So the reactants are our carbon dioxide, water, and light. Our products are our end result, the glucose and the oxygen. Last thing, what types of organisms are actually able to undergo photosynthesis? Well, it says it occurs only in plants' chloroplasts. The chloroplasts, and this is what gets people confused sometimes, those are referred to as an organelle. Another thing it says plants, that's slightly misleading. So let's use more general terms instead of just plants. Instead of plant, you might see the word autotroph. The other type of word that you could potentially see is going to be producer. Those are synonyms for one another. They mean the same exact thing. So when they're asking for an organism, plant, algae, tree, grass, autotroph, producer, those would all be able to undergo photosynthesis. For an organelle, the organelle is going to be chloroplast. Next thing we have are guard cells. Guard cells are in plants. Sounds like they guard the cell, but that's not exactly what they do. Guard cells are on the underside of leaves. And what they do is they regulate or they control the amount of gases that are being exchanged. Gases can include things like carbon dioxide, oxygen, and water. The main reason why they're doing this is in order to maintain homeostasis. Now that word homeostasis, remember, homeo meaning same, stasis meaning to stay. This is talking about internal balance. They don't want too much carbon dioxide. They don't want too much oxygen. They don't want too much water inside of them. They also don't want too little. This makes sure that over the course of the day, they, sell, they stay relatively stable. Now, the little space in between those two are going to be called a stomate, or sometimes you might see stomata. These specialized cells, make sure you know this diagram here, those specialized cells that they're referring to, those are actually the guard cells. Guard cell, 
guard cell, and then the space in the middle is still in there. The last thing is going to be respiration. Once again, if you see a respiration question, you're going to want to write down that formula right away. That's going to help you pinpoint exactly what they're talking about. Respiration provides energy for the cells. Now remember that energy is called ATP. One thing I would add to this, instead of just energy, a lot of times we're going to refer to this as the usable energy. ATP is the usable energy that your cells are actually able to use to do things that they need to do. Here we have the formula. Once again, we have glucose represented by C6H12O6. Remember, that is organic. Another thing that I forgot to mention on photosynthesis is that sometimes they'll refer to this as the chemical energy. Then we have our oxygen. Once again, over the arrows, probably a good idea to add enzymes. And then we have carbon dioxide, water, and ATP. I would label my ATP as my usable energy. So, what type of organisms use respiration? Every organism. Any organism that's alive, whether it be a bacteria, a fungi, a plant, an animal, they all need energy. And that energy is made inside of an organelle called the mitochondria. Once again, make sure you know those terms, organelle, organism. They're two different things. Sometimes instead of organelle, you're going to write down structure. And that's it for photosynthesis and respiration.